Hello again, this is David Holt, RN, Consultant at Giving IV Antibiotics. Today's subject is you witness one of your colleagues in her patient's room programming an IV pump for 105 cc's volume to be infused when she hangs a 100 cc bag of Portaz. The patient according to the nurse, will be going to physical therapy in 30 minutes. The nurse hanging the antibiotic has said and promised that she will be back in exactly 30 minutes to switch off the IV pump and disconnect her to go to physical therapy. So let's think about what are the problems with this situation. First off, the nurse has programmed the intermittent IV antibiotic for only 105 cc's. Now on the face of it, programming 105 for a bag which purportedly contained 100 cc's of antibiotic seems okay. But we are nurses or student nurses and it is not okay. The volume of the IV tubing is going to be over 30 cc's and as this is taken from question three of my book, 25 questions and answers on how to give IV antibiotics, I can assure you that the mainline IV tubing was 20 cc's and the secondary line IV tubing was 10 cc's. Next up, we have the IV bag overfill, which is about 10% according to pharmacists and according to research, if you look it up on the web, most companies send their IV bags with 10% more than is stated on the bag. So if you're doing your mental arithmetic as I went along there, you've already got 140 cc's, which is not going to get into the patient if the nurse switches off the pump exactly after 30 minutes. In fact, the first 12 to 14 minutes of that infusion is not going to give the patient any antibiotic. All it's going to do is clear the saline or D5 out of the IV tubing and at that point 12 to 14 minutes in the antibiotic will begin to creep into the veins. So when the nurse arrives back in the room upon hearing her IV pump alarming she switches off the pump sees that the bag is almost empty, gives a nice little chuckle to herself because she's keeping the patient happy, which we all do like to do, and the patient will get to physical therapy on time, but with only about 70% of the antibiotic inside of her body. So let's use Holt's IV rules, either the Holt IV rule 30 cc's or Holt's IV rule number two which is the total of the IV tubing, the bag overfill and any ex extensions. Look up those subjects online or in my other videos. Now the reason I held up a title with uh, multi-drug resistant organisms it's your fault is because it is the nursing's fault if we have a patient, we get a sputum specimen, for instance, back that was sent to the lab on the day of admit, and it says that the patient is susceptible to Fortas. And then five days later, after five days of treatment with Fortas, we send off another specimen, and it comes back resistant to Fortas. It is probably because that patient only ever got about 70% of her IV antibiotics. And so we, the nurses, are partially responsible for the patient becoming multi-drug resistant. And the same is happening with vancomycin resistant enterococcus because nurses are giving, if they're lucky, 85% of the vancomycin dose because vanco typically comes in a 200 to 250 cc bag.